Greetings, my name is Louise Dente, and I welcome you to yet another edition of Cultural Caravan. On this edition, it's a special as we celebrate the centennial of a unique order of black nuns in Harlem, New York. The nuns are known as the Franciscan Handmaidens of the Most Pure Heart of Mary, which is celebrating their centennial with a really delightful um, celebration with some wonderful people. We're going to meet these wonderful nuns. We're going to speak to some very dear and special people who've come far and near to celebrate their work as they as celebrate. And I'm gonna be joined by my co-host, uh, Ms. Rabine Nickens, as we meet and greet those who came to honor these wonderful women in celebration of our community. Are you ready? Well, I am. Let's go. So we'd like to ask both of you, what is the significance of this event, not only to the community uh, in New York City, but also just to the Catholic Church? Who do you want to ask? Either one of you. <laughs> you go first. Okay. <laughs> Um, we are sisters of the Franciscan and maids of the Most Pure Heart of Mary, and we, this is our hundredth anniversary. We are founded hundred years ago, and towards the end of last two years, we are about folding up, but the spirit appeared and inspired us to move on with, with our Pope, inspiration, and our Archbishop. So our Archbishop. Well, our Archbishop told us and preached us and to making all things new. And the Pope asked us to get to the um, periphery with a missionary spirit to those who are marginalized. So we decided, we prayed, went into prayer, and came out of our chapter with the inspiration from the Holy Spirit that our work is not completed. And we quote the scripture, Revelation chapter 3, the, ch the message of uh, the angels to Sardis, to the church in Sardis. He said, I know your works. I know how you are living, as, but how you are living as you are alive, but you are dead. Wake up, revive what is left, or else what is left, we, we die. So we said, all right, we hear the spirit, and we move on. And that's why we are here today, celebrating our 100th anniversary. This is such an inspiring story of hard work, dedication, perseverance, and spirituality. Uh, Archbishop, like, what do you think the rest of the, the Catholic Church, as well as the rest of the community, can learn from the handmaidens? Well, to trust in the Lord and to know that our work is never done. For a century, see, they've been, we not only celebrate what they do, we celebrate who they are. And they've been a magnificent presence. We just had Easter Sunday when Jesus said, I will be with you forever. I will stay alive with you. One of the ways he stays alive is in the good work of his followers. And that's what the sisters do. They remind us of the presence of Jesus. The people in Harlem, when they see the sisters, Sisters, they're reminded of the love of God. When they see the sisters, they're reminded of the mercy of Jesus. When they see the sisters, they're reminded of the heart of Mary and Jesus. They're a powerful reminder to all of us of what Easter's all about. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're here with David Usher of WNBC. Thank you so much for being with Cultural Caravan TV. I'm happy to do it and happy to be here tonight. Can you share with us a little bit of what the significance of this event is for you? For me personally, let me tell you, and I'm going to tell this to the audience, but uh, my mother was raised in Mississippi at a horrible time. And at that time, only the nuns could teach black children. Mm -hmm. So imagine that this order was founded originally in Georgia because they were trying to pass legislation that wouldn't let white people teach black kids. So I feel personally connected to the sisters here in a way. Uh, my mother was a devoted Catholic.
Catholic and my father was. And to know what they have given to Harlem, to Staten Island, to Africa now, it's extraordinary. Very important for people to know. If there was one thing that you would want uh, other people to get out of this event, um, is particularly for those that don't know uh, what you would want them to do to move forward, to support, what do you think you would suggest? Well, I think to, to, to remember that how people do still offer sacrifice to the church and to faith, and they need to grow in numbers. They want to grow in numbers, and they've got a renewed effort now. They were inspired by Pope Francis, and I think that, that we have to do whatever we can to let their message go forth, much like their faith does. Yes, and hopefully with people like you here to support them, uh, that will take place. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, all right. Dear God, our Father, we praise and thank you for the gift of faith and, the, and hope and love. We praise and thank you for the gift of the resurrection of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this evening, we bless your holy name for a hundred years of our beloved Franciscan handmaids of the most pure heart of Mary. Dear God, we want to we want to concentrate on each of those words. Our beloved sisters are Franciscan. They follow the simplicity, the poverty, the charity of St. Francis. They're handmaids, which is another way of saying that they serve you and your people, especially your children, in your name. They're most pure in that they remind us powerfully of the, the innocence, the beauty, the nobility of the human person made in your image and likeness, the sanctity of every human life. They're a heart, a heart of Harlem, a heart of this archdiocese, a heart of this great city. And they model themselves after Mary, the mother of your son, Jesus, in her humble, obedient, joyful, grateful acceptance of your holy will. This just isn't about the past, dear God. You bet it is, as we thank you for a hundred years, but it's about the present, as we celebrate the sisters we love now, and it's about the future, because these sisters have taught us that if we trust in your plan, if we give ourselves over to your providence, it's gonna work out. You're never finished with us. You're never done with us. There's always a next chapter, and it all begins and ends with you. So, God our Father, hear all of us today, our distinguished honorees, all of our friends and neighbors, hear us all thank you for the gift that these sisters have been, and hear us all beg you to keep them close to you and ever present with us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yes, we are joined with Congressman the Honorable Charles Rangel. Uh, welcome to Cultural Caravan TV. Good to be with you. What is the significance of this event to you? It's definitely uh, here in Harlem, and of course you are Harlem, but what is it to you personally? My childhood. Uh, I used to run after the Catholic girls, so much so that they think I was one of the students. <laughs> but actually, I went to public school. I was an altar boy at St. Aloysius. And in the 1940s, they were located on 31st Street. So I've been with them ever since they've been here. The Handmaids of Mary is the backbone of the Catholic Church. And so are the nuns. They work so hard. They're so dedicated. So they helped to raise me, my kids, and my grandkids. What should the rest of us do in the community to support even further? Do you have any suggestions for us? They do so many things in pantries, help the homeless and the poor, just knock on their door and just say you want to help, and they'll be there to help. You know They're what? wonderful. They're just beautiful people. You know, dedicating your entire life to doing good, it takes quite a courageous person to do that. Yeah, and they do it. it. Somebody yeah. standing right here who's dedicated their uh, life. Well, <laughs> May has been a joy every day. Yes, thank you so much for thank sharing you. that with us. Thank you. I've told... Uh, Gladys Barnes and Joan Cortland that this is no time to talk about the Charlie Wrangle on Lenox Avenue in St. Aloysius. What happened when I was a kid stays to when I was a kid. <laughs> but I can tell you this, that the mysteries of religion were never understood by me because the symbols that we had in Harlem 
during the 30s and the 40s were symbols I could not relate to then and I can't relate to now. So if God turns out to be an old white man with flowing white hair, I am in deep trouble. <laughs> and I was an altar boy. And between the incense and the Latin, it was a strange experience. <laughs> but thank God for the handmaids of Mary. Sister Gertrude, Sister Benedict, Mother Cecilia. They looked like the angels. They acted like angels. If I ever doubted that there was someone that could have the passion of giving and receiving the rewards of just plain old giving, it would have to be the handmaids of Mary. And we are joined by a wonderful artiste extraordinaire, Carmen Ruby Floyd of Broadway fame. Thank you for joining us at Cultural Caravan TV. Well, thank you for having me. What is the significance of this event for you as an artist to come here today? I was just saying, I went to Catholic high school. I never saw an African American mm. none. Like, and I, I didn't even know that existed. Mm. So, for me to find out this is what I'm singing for in a hundred years, okay, I, it was just great. And then I saw them outside. I'm like, oh my God, this it's it was it was just really lovely and touching. You know what I mean? Because like I said, I personally didn't have that experience. Experience, and I wonder, I'm just excited that I had the opportunity to now know of this knowledge and now know of the history of it. So just just wonderful. It was really wonderful. And I'm sure that they're they're happy that you're here to support them. I hope them. so. I hope they think I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to disappoint, you know, nuns. Then that's not show get. Then that's not show lose. So the Bible said it is still is news. Mama may have and Papa may have, but God bless the child. The sky is all that's got is all. strong gets more while the weak ones fade empty pockets you'll ever make the grave mama may have and papa may have but God the child has got his own has got his own
that's got is all on. What a delight to be joined by artiste extraordinaire, Miss Phyllis Yvonne Stigney. Thank you for being with us in Cultural Caravan TV. Thank you for having Cultural Caravan TV. You know, we were really moved by some of the words that you said tonight mm -hmm. in regards to the handmaidens. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about what this event and women like that mean to you? Being a woman of color, it is always important to support, applaud, recognize, celebrate other women of color. And for them to have done whatever they did for a hundred years, it's amazing. It's major. And so I try to say yes whenever we are doing that. It's not about the religion. It's not even about the politics. It's about these are women of color who, regardless of from whence they came, we know what their struggle must have been. Must have been for a hundred years to survive. And so watching them on here and now on Sunday, I was able to get a glimpse and get a get get a perfume, if you will, of what they individually were about. But collectively, whenever black women come together for common good, for prayer, or anything positive, I want to be part of that. I need a, I need a little piece of that. So I'm excited about being here, and I'm about excited about celebrating these women who at a time when it wasn't popular, when it wasn't easy, just being a nun, but to be a black nun. So I, I applaud them and I support them and I'm here to celebrate them. So we are honored to have the Reverend Al Sharpton here at the Handmaidens event. Thank you and welcome to Cultural Caravan TV. Thank you. Can you share with us a little bit more about the significance of this event to you, um, particularly as somebody that's a person of faith as well as a person of activism? I think that it's, the significance is to see people that have worked so unselfishly for 100 years uh, and served, never looked for a lot of notoriety, never looked for a lot of credit just doing the work. For them to honor some of us is the highest honor you can get because they worked for no honor and they would honor the work of others. And we that are of faith know that the highest calling is that of being a servant. And one of the things that the sisters were sharing with us earlier was that it was so hard to keep this order going and um, a lot of young people sometimes don't really know the significance. Do you have any messages or suggestions about how we can get more young people involved either in faith or activism or both? I think the way to get young people is by letting them see the results of the work and they will then see that they need to engage in work. Nothing that they have have got there because somebody didn't plant the seed and then nurtured the seed and made it grow. And that's what these this order has done for a century now. I'm very honored tonight uh, to have this award. And uh, as Charles said, when you struggle a long time, nights like this are not often. And I was very happy that I could share this because there are many nights that you spend with controversy and dealing with crisis. And as I came, my daughters of Dominique and Ashley with me, my companion, Asia, my brother, and the one who makes everything work for me, Tony Hardy. And I thought about how when in 1916 this order started, and they had the courage to go across social lines and educate blacks. And 100 years later, we have a black president and a black attorney general. No one knew 100 years ago where we would be 100 years later. And no one knows tonight where we'll be 100 years from now. But the work will continue because, Congressman Rangel, I'll be slightly political, because even with the great achievements, there's always challenges. For every Barack Obama, there's a Donald Trump in the wings waiting. I won't get no more political than that. <laughs> but I must say that having grown up in Brooklyn, 
and often come into Harlem and then based here now for the last quarter of a century. You handmaids will never know in communities of need that everyone is out for an angle and you can't tell the honest from the dishonest. To see you that represent pure service, that don't look for attention, that don't look for publicity, but just serve. For little kids to be able to say, who are they? And why do they do what they do and look like they look? And for people to be able to say there's goodness that walks through our community, gives a reference point to kids that would grow up broken that there is a chain of goodness, even in places that it's hard to find. What you've meant to the Harlem community and what you've meant for children that had no other reference point for goodness is more than any award that you could give any of us tonight. We're here. We're here to honor you because your handmaids of the most high, and you've demonstrated that in the most humble way, and your marquees that God is real because you serve without any recognition, and that's why you're so important to us. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this broadcast, and we continue to encourage you to tune in, to write, and to tell a friend. But until next time, Louise Dente saying thank you. I realized that to learn about the people, you study the dance. And when you study the dance, you learn the history of the people. Because dance in traditional African cultures used to preserve. And so that the young coming forth learn by age group. And as I said, you know, I'm skipping, skipping, skipping years, years, years. In, in traditional African cultures, you learn by age group. Mm -hmm. So you would have the toddlers who will be going around, they aren't paying any attention, but they are, mm -hmm. because these rhythms are becoming a part. And then as they go into the initiation rites, everything is explained. Then uh, after the initiation, then they are ready for courtship and marriage and then maybe baby naming ceremonies and on and on and up until time to, they make the transition to the grand ancestral ground.
about the importance of celebrating this legend and her family's Well, the, the longevity of it, the quality, the non-negotiable dignity, that's kind of what Ruby and Asa represented. I remember as a child in South Carolina, when Jack Robinson was the ultimate hero for all of us, the great breakthrough, Ruby and Jack Robinson doing the Jack Robinson story. That was a big deal. Uh, there were no black anchors on TV at that time. None, anywhere in America. Uh, so the forerunner on screen, on stage, but their stardom did not take them into another world. It took them to the ground where the people were. In so many ways, Oz and Ruby are like reality TV. They like real stuff. What you, what you see is what you get. And whether it was marching in Selma, Alabama with Dr. King, uh, Oz are doing uh, Malcolm X's funeral, call him Sweet Prince. I mean, this is awesome. I remember the, the first black caucus meeting, right after Dr. King had been killed, and we were searching for our way. We lost this huge giant. It was Austin Davis who says, not the, not the rap, it's the map, not the man's the plan. That, that's Austin awesome too.